Uh, that's because I've got some boxes here that in a few minutes we're going to go through together and uh, see what's inside. Ooh, echo. It's an echo chamber in here. <laughs> um, I hope everybody's been doing well out there. I haven't done a live feed in a little while. And I thought it would be prudent of me to do an update and let you know what's been going on, uh, what I have planned, and uh, I guess what's been happening with our family. And as you're logging on, uh, such as the Eternal Darkness uh, says hi. It's the friendliest name from the most ominous sounding uh, viewer. <laughs> Eternal Darkness. Um, but hello and uh, good evening and uh, nice to see everybody on here right now. We got Oklahoma, Ireland. <clears throat> I am gearing up actually for a trip to the United States of America. If you have uh, watched our channel for a while, you know that I'm located in Canada. And if you can't tell from my Canadian accent, which um, does, it, it, it comes out <laughs> uh, every once in a while. I'm in Canada, and I'm going to be going to uh, meet my brother for the first time uh, in Colorado. Colorado has been a very giving state for me um, because I found my sister for the first time. She was in Colorado Springs, and now my brother so happens to be in Denver. Neither of them were born there. They're both from Montana originally, but uh, now they're both out in Colorado, and I'm going to go meet um, I was going to say them. I've met Heather. Uh, I do have another relative that I'm meeting for the first time, though. My niece Alyssa uh, just had a um, uh, just had a baby. Well, it's not that long ago. It's been a while now, um, but uh, she has a little baby Henry that I've not met. So I'm excited to go to Colorado to see my new family, to uh, spend time with loved ones, and to get acquainted with my brother whom I've never met. So it's going to be kind of a <laughs> exciting and a surreal trip, I'm sure. You know, um, I, I my head wasn't really wrapped around it. Uh, until recently and now that trip is coming up in a couple weeks and I was thinking man, this is this is real This is really gonna happen. I'm really gonna go out there and meet my brother for the first time and I guess I'm uh, part of me is thinking, you know, I wonder um, uh, You know if he's gonna look like my dad He wouldn't know if he did or not because uh, they never met my dad, but uh, I would know uh, It's gonna be strange for me if, if he does look like my dad. It'll be super super different <laughs> uh, so anyway, we're gonna uh, we're gonna go and see um, see what things are like with my new brother. Anyway, uh, Punk Yardbark sent uh, two British pounds. Thank you so much. And what looks like a uh, flaming box. <laughs> uh, uh, Nancy says she's excited for me. I'm I'm excited, and um, I'm sure he's gonna be a very nice person. It's just gonna be that in the back of my head. You know, thinking, you know, this is my dad's kid. I, I'm, I'm the youngest sibling uh, by far from any of my siblings. So, uh, as far for now, anyway, as far as I know. Uh, Torino says, New York here. You haven't been here since COVID started. I know. I was in New York when the outbreak started. Uh, I, I just, like, they were talking about it while I was getting on the airplane and stuff. Uh, so, yeah, I would like to go back to New York at some point, too. Um, Stacy sent $2. Thank you so much. Um... And uh, hello, um, Tammy Lee says, can't see you, no picture. Can you guys see me okay? I imagine somebody else would have said there was no picture if there was no picture by now. So I'm going to assume that it's all right. You guys give me a thumbs up or something if the picture is okay. Um, <clears throat> Greetings from New York says, come back Alex. Yes, I would, I would like to. Oh, M Melissa is moderating in the house and she says she sees me, <laughs> which is great. Um, this summer has been a big summer of um, transitioning in my business life. It's been, um, you know, very bittersweet. Um, closing my shop up a couple months ago. And I've had a lot of people come in that have been watching my videos on the Facebook feed, has been reposting a lot of my old content. And so people are showing up at my store thinking I'm still open, even though I've posted on Google that I'm permanently closed. So I feel bad for those people who have gone there thinking I'm open. But um, I will say, somebody asked me if um, somebody asked me if I if I miss the store, and on some days yes, but on most days no. Um, and not that I don't. I love going out and finding antiques and treasures. In fact, I still am going out and finding antiques and treasures, which is we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Some of the things I recently found. Um, but I don't like hanging on to a lot of things. And so for me, not being surrounded by what felt like a, um, 
wall of claustrophobic stuff around me at the shop all day is kind of a relief, if I'm honest, to have uh, to have the store closed. But uh, I am trying to um, transition what I'm doing because I still I'm not retired. I still want to have a job and um, I still want to be productive. And one thing that I really love doing is uh, property renovations and, and clear outs when I can. But I really like like taking those ugly duckling kind of properties and doing something creative with it. So I'm hoping that down the road, um, once I get some capital saved up, if I do end up selling the building or what have you, if I do a couple more auctions, um, maybe I'll be able to buy a really rough property and do some kind of crazy makeover of it. I think that's what I'd like to do. So anyway, um, I've sort of, uh, on these live chats, I sometimes try and positively manifest things. Uh, Courtney sent $5, thank you so much. She said, changed my mindset in life. Thanks for the positive vibes, thank you. <laughs> Uh, and I'm talking about, you know, it sounds very hippie-ish, you know, like uh, positive vibes and manifest, you know, positivity and what you want to do. But uh, <clears throat> I said, I've said in the past, you know, like when, when the Rolls Royce that I was working on seemed like it would never get done. Uh, I said that, you know, one day I'm going to drive that Rolls Royce up to my new addition on my building. And they're both going to be done. And that happened. Um, I said, you know, I'll end up with an old Volkswagen at some point in the new year. And that's happened. Uh, I have the Volkswagen camper van, um, camp mobile, and uh, I should say bus. It's a camp. It's, they call it, technically it's a bus. And uh, now I'm putting it out there that uh, at some point, for come fall, I'd like to find a really interesting property. I don't know if it's going to be commercial or residential, but I'd like to find an interesting property, uh, probably residential, and do a makeover of it and get my friends back with me and see if, uh, you know, if Hans and Josh and, and all my regular crew are able to come back and work with me. So um, <laughs> that's what I'd like to do. Uh, Chris says, can you manifest me winning the lottery? <laughs> um, it's funny. Uh, I don't play the lottery, so I, I, can't, uh, I can't manifest you winning the lottery. I can hope that you'd be successful and, and find, uh, you know, things that'll help you live like you've won the lottery. But anyway, ho hopefully you do well. Um, Carla says, hello, Alex and Melissa. Yes, uh, Guadalupe says, yeah, I'd like to see the gang together. Me too. I'm probably, um, truthfully, at my happiest when I am doing uh, something creative. Hi, Kathy. Kathy Cash is with us today. Our good friend, Kathy Johnny Cash's daughter. One of his daughters. Uh, and our favorite Cash, because she's the one that joins our channel. So, Kathy, nice to have you with us. Um, I am very much looking forward to what... Uh, what this fall is going to bring. So if you see content coming out uh, in the next little while, uh, I am still doing things and I'm sharing sort of what's happening in my world right now. And uh, I'm going to continue to do that. But the next big thing for me is some kind of crazy reno series. So that's, that's, I'm aiming for fall for that. So if you're wondering when's Alex going to do something big and crazy again, I do have that plan, uh, but that's going to be uh, probably come fall. And so he says, watch out for crashing prices though. Yes, uh, well, I will. Hopefully I'll find a place that has crashed <laughs> and has some room to grow. Um, we've, I, so far, knock on wood, Melissa and I have not done poorly on any property we've bought. Uh, so we'll, I'll have to be careful though, because yeah, if you're putting a lot of money into renovating a property, you have to get it at the right price. So we'll see. Uh, okay, so uh, let's see what's going on. I'm going to the United States to meet my, I, can't, I guess I can't call him my new brother. He's around before me, but he's new to me. Uh, I'm going to see Heather and Steve, my brother. Um, I'm working on another car, which I've not shown you yet. Um, that yes, yeah, some other crazy weird thing showed up in my life. And uh, that's gonna be a video coming soon, but uh, I'm waiting until I can hopefully make the thing run to kind of do a beginning, middle, and end on that one. Uh, but in the meantime though, uh, I actually was out looking at a 19, uh, 48 Indian Chief motorcycle uh, in my neighborhood here just last week and uh, it was a beautiful bike. It was a little bit out of my price range. Uh, however, they had some other stuff there and I'm going to show you some of the stuff I picked up from a basement and we're going to uh, flip this around and show you. So let's do a little digging through boxes. Some of you might find this boring but I wanted to, I want to show you what's, what's cool about what's, what's in here. <laughs> anyway, you get the picture. I'm going to take this off the stand, the tripod, which I rarely ever bring with me. Look, I do have a tripod, folks. 
It's just when I'm out doing things, I don't often have it. So, um, ended up with this 1930s era. I do my hair like that sometimes. <laughs> 1930s era Canadian Club cigar advertisement in really good shape on cardboard. Nice piece. Um, metal signs are always worth a lot more, but even being cardboard, it's probably still worth a couple hundred bucks. We got that uh, from an area from our, our local area, um, from a gentleman from our local area who's one of our watchers, I should say. Michelle, back, and thank you so much for the super chat. Inside of this red bin, this is where I got from the, uh, the people that had the motorcycle, also had this red bin in their garage, and they had a really nice Mustang. I didn't end up with that. It's a box of trains. Look at this. Um, what was cool about this set is it has the American Flyer O-Gauge Streamliner set. Right there, see that? Now, it's not 100% complete. That would have been the engine. The engine might be in here. Um, the motor for this might be in here somewhere. But the Burlington Zephyr was a really cool uh, streamline train back in the day. And of course they made toys of it, but look at this thing. It's like an Art Deco masterpiece. Um, this is in, I think it's aluminum or it's plated. Maybe it's nickel plated. It looks like aluminum to me. Anyway, it's a neat thing. And there's a lot of neat toys in here. Well, a lot of neat toy trains. Uh, die cast metal marks. There's tin plate uh, marks toys, all the track. Track incidentally is kind of worthless. Um, nobody really, train collectors should kind of care less about track. Oh, here's the, I think this might be the uh, motor for that, for that Zephyr. Or for one of them, anyway. I'll have to figure that out, but anyway. It was a neat little set, so I got this whole box of trains and the Transformer. And I will admit, the, uh, the tin cars are always really fun, too. The graphics on them and stuff, and they're not in terrible shape. Not in terrible shape. I seem to say that on a lot of videos. It's not terrible, but... I guess those are my standards. But what I wanted to show you, we get into 1980s toys a little bit. And you've got, you might recognize who this is. He pities the fool who has that haircut now. Maybe that haircut would be in again. But we got Mr. T, so there's the Mr. T set. And this would have had an action van that you could have gotten to go along with it too. So I ended up with some Mr. T figures. And inside of these boxes, these were all, I got these all from the original owner. 1980s G.I. Joe. I actually had this one when I was a kid. My parents weren't a big fan of military toys. I'm not saying that's a good or a bad thing, but my parents were kind of hippies. And so I, I couldn't, I didn't have a lot of G.I. Joe stuff, but I did have the G.I. Joe spaceship, I remember that. But what's nice about this is that he's kept everything together with the instructions. And if there's a little guy with it, he's got the little card for it. Now, 80s G.I. Joe figures, and like I said, some of you might not be in 80s G.I. Joe stuff, but you'll be surprised to learn something. I'm going to, I'm going to try and find, um, you know, you got your fighter jets. And when you have all the little people and the instructions, it really adds to it, adds to the value. But there is one piece in here, and the title of the video, I'm trying to find it. The title of the video was, Did I Find a Thousand Dollar Toy? And I'm gonna tell you if, uh, well, this is a good one, too. The big jet, right there. And it's got the figure and everything, that, but that's not what I'm looking for. There is a tank in here, which is supposed to be quite rare. And I'm just trying to find it. It's nice, nice to have the boxes when you can find them, too. Where is it? Nope. I mean, there's all kinds of great vehicles and stuff in here. I'm keeping them more or less together because it looks like he's kept all the accessories with it and the instructions. It's a nice thing about getting it from a kid who had it since brand new. Everything's in really good shape. But there is one particular piece in here that will make everything all worthwhile. Uh, he said he had, aha, uh -huh. this is it. Right here. Now, you might think this is silly, and I hope the rest of the barrel for the tank's in there anyway. Anyway, you might think this is silly. Does it have the battery tray? Yes, it does. This tank is potentially worth like a thousand bucks. And that's because, hang on, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this down first. I'm going to put that down and not drop it. <laughs> put it back in the box for now, and I'm going to put this back on the tripod. And I'm going to tell you why. 
for those of you watching this later, you're gonna be like, why Alex, why are you taking all this time to see, I can't edit when I'm doing this. I'm just digging in the box right now too. I've got Cobra Commander in here with his little accessory there. I'm gonna have to dig through these boxes and see if the rest of the pieces are there for this. Um, little stuff like the tank tread's a little loose, but there used to be a store in Canada called Consumers Distributing. I don't know if you guys have ever been to Lee Valley um, or not, but it's kind of a catalog like, store where you walk up and they have a catalog and you tell them what part number you want, and then they go in the back and bring it out to you. Well, Consumers Distributing was a store like that, um, but they did that with toys and all kinds of other things. But for, for a kid in the 1980s, especially in the Western Canadian area, like I'm in, in Alberta, going to Consumers Distributing was like, you know, they had everything, every kind of Star Wars toy, Hot Wheel, everything you could imagine was warehoused right there. And you, you felt like you were getting it right directly from the source from the warehouse. Now, because they had sold so much stuff with um, Mattel and other companies, they were actually able to get a deal where they had their own custom tank made just for consumers distributing. And that was this one right here. It's, it's called the Mobat. Um, so the regular GI Joe tank is green and it's for the good guys, but this tank is black and not surprisingly, it's for the bad guys. So this tank was very rare. You could only get it at a very random store in Canada at a very specific time. And so this tank, uh, mint in box is probably several thousand dollars loose like this. You're talking quite literally 750 to a thousand dollars. I'm talking Canadian dollars here, but 750 to a thousand dollars Canadian for a little plastic tank. Um, it's battery operated, it drives. Um, and if I can make sure that this thing still functions, um, then it'll be worth perhaps even more. So I'm gonna do a little tinkering on it. Um, I've got a rubber track that's just kind of, it's thrown a track, it's not broken, it's just come off. So I'm gonna get this all in uh, supreme, clean operating condition. That will be e eBay bound. Um, I wouldn't uh, trust playing that through a local auction because only certain people are gonna know what something like that is. So anyway, 80s toys. Certain 80s toys can be worth a lot of money. Um, this one in particular is a good piece, so it made up for me buying all these toys. Uh, I didn't pay anywhere near that for this stuff, um, but I will say the gentleman did know this was a valuable tank and gave me a good deal on it because I was buying everything. So um, it's not like I said it was worth five bucks or anything like that. He knew it was a very valuable tank and uh, I ended up with it. So we're going to uh, go through the rest of the boxes, well we as in me at some point later. I'm going to set this down. And uh, I'm going to go through the rest of it later on and try and um, uh, see if we can get a good dollar for that thing on eBay. Hey, by the way, look at this. I'm going to take the camera down again. We're going to take this off and we're going to go on a field trip here. Look, I'm spinning you around. I'm spinning you right around. <laughs> I want to give you an update. So the little Nash Metropolitan. I did a video on this and some of you may not have seen the video. Look, I'm, I've got a cigar ad sitting on it right now. But I've been polishing it and making it look all clean. Uh, and I got it running nicely. Uh, fixed the, they had a problem with the spark plug wires and the spark plugs, I got that all fixed. So it starts up no problem. I got all the lights working on it and the brakes were not working, but uh, Jason and I ble bled, we didn't breed the, we bled the brakes, blah. Words are hard right now. We bled the brakes the other day and now it's a running, driving, stopping, fully operational little vehicle. So this one is pretty much ready to go. And that was one that I was just kind of kicking my, I was dragging my heels, waiting to uh, get that one all fixed up and it's, it's done now. So that's one, one less that I have to worry about. And if you recall, I had this uh, old limousine here, which I fixed the door on the other day. Now. Uh, the limousine I have been continuing to work on and uh, right now you'll notice that it's hovering in mid-air. That's because I decided to take it, the uh, rims off. Uh, there's one of them there, but I took four of the rims in to get new tires. The problem is um, the shop doesn't really know how to, they've taken them apart but they don't know how to put them back together because it's what's called a split rim and um, it's not a normal split rim. I'm trying not to lose my internet connection. But this ring comes off. I, I referred to it as the Widowmaker rim. But they're not used to seeing this retaining clip on here. And um, yeah, they just are a little bit nervous about it. So I'm hoping, I was trying to reach them today to get an update on it. 
to find out if they're able to get the tires on because uh, as soon as the tires are on, I'm gonna get this thing hauled in, uh, likely to uh, Stuart over at uh, Sovereign Auto that did the rolls for me. And I just want him to make it run and stop. That's all I care about, run and stop. If it can run and stop, I'll be happy. I can make it run, just not off the tank, so I wanna get that in there. Uh, let's see, Laura says the Nash Metropolitan is on my dream board, my wish list. Love, 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 love them. Yes, they are a cute little car, aren't they? Well, for, um, was that, who was that that just said that comment? Was that Laura? So for Laura, I'm gonna give you the tour of this weird little car. How about that? Since she has this on her dream list. Uh, this is a 1954. What's interesting about the 1954 is, is it doesn't have a trunk. Well, I mean, it does in a sense that there's a big space right there, but there's no line. You can't open it from the side. There's nothing there. The trunk is actually, hopefully this isn't boring for you guys, but the trunk is accessible through the back. The middle of the seat has a keyhole and you have to reach back behind you and turn the key and that drops down and that's how you access the trunk. So uh, putting groceries and stuff in this car would be a bit of a tour, I must say. They were probably thinking, you know, luggage. Even then it's still a problem. So only the really early cars don't have a trunk lid. The later ones, they think somebody must have complained who like, you know, it's a cute car and all, but uh, geez guys, put some hinges on that back end there and make a trunk. <laughs> and they eventually did. Um, the other kind of quirky thing about this car, which has many quirky features on it, um, it, Hudson and Nash at that time were styling these cars to be tr fairly aerodynamic. Well, I wouldn't say aerodynamic, but low drag. And so they thought if they didn't have wheel arches that it would uh, reduce the drag, which it probably does, but it also reduces the turning radius of the car. So um, it's not the world's best turning radius, but it's not so bad. I'm gonna get inside. Look at this interior. Doesn't it look like breakfast at Tiffany's in here with this like hound's tooth check pattern? like some 1950s uh, school marm's dress. <laughs> Maybe not a school marm. That's more Audrey Hepburnish. This is somebody with a kerchief in here. Um, okay, so your dash, maybe you guys will find this interesting, I don't know. Um, you have your speedometer here and your fuel gauge is right in the center. Um, your signal light switch. You know, normally there's like a lever. This is how you turn your signal lights on. You push this little thing on and off, which means that you have to take your hand off the wheel and turn the middle of your steering wheel like rather than just like putting your fingers there and turning the signal light you have to go ah, I'm going to change lanes ah. <laughs> assuming you have have more than one arm it's probably not that terrifying um but it is a weird place to put your signal light horns in your usual spot doot, doot. uh it's a column shift standard it has the radio right here and to start the car you actually turn the key on and you pull this little lever all right, right there. Oh, I guess you have to have the choke out. My door just closed for me. Almost. Anyway, I don't want to gas myself out in here, but that's the idea. You pull the little lever, you pull the little starter button right there and you're all good to go. Um, I don't think it has a very big gas tank um, because I put a jerry can in it. It seemed to fill it right up. <laughs> Um, oh, the headlights, that was the other weird thing. The headlight switch is actually on your ignition. And so you turn your lights on right there. And I thought my headlights weren't working, but as it turns out, they are. I just thought, I thought one of these was the switches over here. And then I, I actually found in the trunk, hang on, look behind me. I found in the trunk, the original owner's manual and everything for this car. So this thing is a hundred percent complete with the shop manual, owner's manual, everything. So it was probably somebody's much loved vehicle that ended up here and it's super duper clean. Anyway, funny little car, funny little, it has a British engine. It has an Austin engine from an Austin car. Um, they were built in England actually. Not many people know that the Nash Metropolitan was built in England and the English thought it was over the top 19, they, at the time they thought it was an over the top American car. Oh, I left my lights on. And they didn't sell very well over there. Look at them Yanks with their over the top cars. Who do they think they are, those fancy Yanks? <laughs> and so they didn't sell a whole lot of them. Uh, this was made for North American export and more specifically, it was made for the Canadian market. So cute as a button now. It's, it's the uh, most Betty Boop of a car that I own. 
<laughs> you can't describe many, many things in life as being Betty Boopish, but that car definitely is. And they made these in a convertible too. So uh, that was for you, Laura. So I, I hope that uh, I hope that you uh, get one of these cars at some point. They're cute. They're quirky. Um, probably best for people that are like five ten or shorter. I fit in it, but it's a little it's a little crammed. I'm six foot one and a little bit. I feel like when I t when I t <laughs> when I talk about height, I feel like you know if you're a, a seven year old kid and you're like I'm seven and three quarters. When people ask about height, I'm like, I'm not like six foot two, so I say I'm six one and a little bit. I feel just like that kid who's saying he's like, I'm seven and three quarters. I'm, oh, I'm almost eight. <laughs> uh, and Jason's taller than me now. My son Jason is almost six foot three. My gosh. Now, Melissa today, she says, uh, honey, can you grab the plates off the top shelf? Because they're kind of up high. And I said, Jason can do it. He's taller than me now. She's like, oh yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> we're not we're not used to getting uh, having another tall person around the house but uh um yeah and he's playing basketball now well not on a team yet but anyway um mike big says did you sell the plymouth wagon i actually traded for this metropolitan i was talking about this the old plymouth wagon turned into this car that's what happened there um i did a few kind of horse tradey swappy things in the last little while the, uh, remember the, the rusty Volkswagen bus I bought? I, ch I sold that and for a little bit more money I ended up with the California Special Mustang, which is insane to think that some car I pulled out of a field was worth almost as much as this beautiful Mustang. But anyway, beyond me. Uh, and yeah, the old station wagon, I ended up getting, I traded almost, almost straight across for this, for the wagon. And the reason that was is that this little Metropolitan here wasn't really in operable condition when I bought it. It was, um, I don't know, it wasn't running right, it didn't stop, but I got that all sorted out and it's actually a pretty good little car now. Uh, so I, I hope you guys have all been well. I hope you've all been uh, keeping well and everything. I have been, um, boy oh boy, what have I been doing? <laughs> Mo, Mike Big says, I, I, I was hoping you'd do a video with Musty. Musty one actually watches my channel and I watch his. He's always fixing up something. I would love it. If he wasn't so far from me, I would be uh, happy to do a, um, um, I guess like a collaboration with him. Uh, he's, he definitely has a lot of skill when it comes to Volkswagen stuff. But I am um, uh, going to, there's another channel that's based out of my area called Cold War Motors. And for those of you that are into uh, car type videos, um, Scott's always working on stuff. People always ask me, oh, you must know Scott. Um, yeah, I know Scott. I've met him many times. Um, he's good friends with my friend Matt, and Matt and I are pretty good friends, and so we have mutual, very good friends in common. And uh, I'm actually going out to his house tomorrow. I don't think I'm going to... It would be weird to go out there and film, unless he's like, you know, if you want to do a vlog, I'll leave that to him. Uh, but I'm going out to another YouTuber's place because he... <laughs> this is going to be a funny story. I bought a car off a guy recently, and I guess a couple years ago, he bought a car off of the same guy, same model, but anyway, his, his car was blue and the same model, mine was red and the same model. But I think he has my keys and I have his keys. Um, so I can't do much with my car until I get the keys. So I'm driving out to his place, uh, to another uh, YouTube channel guy's place who just by happenstance happens to like the exact same weird old cars that I like. <laughs> That's how I met him actually, was at a car show. He had a uh, Citroen, uh, DS station wagon and I walked past all the muscle cars and stuff and I walked right to that car because I knew that whoever had that car was somebody I wanted to meet because um, they're going to be an interesting person and uh, he did not disappoint so I'm uh, I'm looking forward to it oh Cindy from Red Deer Alberta is on Cindy how did you survive the storm last night the area of Cindy Red Deer is one of our subscribers the Red Deer area sits about an hour and a half from where I am on the way to Calgary, which is another big city in my province. And uh, they had a terrible storm yesterday, um, nearly had tornadoes, they had like grapefruit sized hail. Uh, they had people had to pull over on the side of the road because their windshields were getting smashed out of the vehicle. That's how bad the hail was. I saw pictures. So Cindy of Red Deer, did you get hail in your area? Maybe we'll see if she says something. Um, but I saw my, my cousin lives out in that area and uh, she sent pictures of hail that was like, this, it was, maybe in my brain it looked like it was this big, but it was, it was pretty big. It was the size of a grapefruit and people's windows were actually smashed out of the vehicle. That'd be a shocker. 
She says, they didn't get any hail in their area, thank goodness, but the videos I've seen are horrible. Yeah, it's pretty bad. And they're expecting some terrible weather from my area the next couple days too. Uh, so I'm hoping that we don't get, uh, I want rain because my, my lawn is struggling to grow. Uh, we've had, we had monsoon season in June and then we had nothing but dry, arid temperatures uh, for all of July. And we are in need of some rain around here for sure. Um, William says, did Stephen get a parking spot in the garage? No, not, not yet. Um, I, I have three kids and eventually there's gonna be a parking lot outside for the kids. Um, but I did end up upgrading Stephen's vehicle for him to something that's all wheel drive. So um, Stephen will be a little bit safer. We just wanna make sure he was okay in winter. So he has a slightly newer vehicle and it's all wheel drive now, um, which I hope he likes. Anyway, uh, just gonna read some more comments here and then uh, probably log off, I guess, in a little bit here. Uh, so if there's anything you wanna ask or anything you wanna chat about, you can throw topics out there or ask questions and I'll be happy to, to chat with you guys. Uh, Kentucky's got uh, bad flooding right now, I see. Uh, most of Canada wants rain, we are suffering. Yeah, except around Manitoba, I think that they've got really, uh, they've had a lot of rain around Manitoba lately. Uh, up and down in Calgary, what uh, die cutting machine did you get? Oh, she's asking somebody else that. <laughs> Um, will you be doing any, any more motorcycle restorations? Actually, funny thing is, um, I am trying to buy some old motorcycles off a fellow right now. And so if all goes well, I will hopefully end up with a little stash of old motorcycles in the next little while. Um, Guadalupe says, are you still going to the gym? Yes, I am going to the gym. Um, I'm going pretty regularly and actually almost every day. I still have a ways to go. I'm not, I'm not exactly where I need to be yet, but it's getting there. <laughs> but at least, you know, I, it helps when I'm picking boxes up and carrying things around, I feel better. Uh, but I'm going pretty much every day to the gym, uh, except I didn't go today. I'm gonna go after this video though, so I'll, uh, I'll make my way out there. Uh, curiosity meets Cold War, my life complete. Uh, yeah, Terry, I am going out to meet with Scott tomorrow, so we'll see. It, it might be one of those situations where I, maybe neither of us will do a video or maybe we'll both be doing a video and it'll be like cameras pointed at each other, who knows? <laughs> I have a feeling it's just gonna be like a, a normal day where you're just like, hey, what's going on? Um, let's see. Uh, lots of rain in Pauline's area. There's a lot, lots of weather chat too. I am, uh, yeah, I'm eager to get my car, the one that hopefully Scott from Cold War Motors has the keys for, I'm eager to see A, if it runs, and B, get it moved in here, because if we are getting this crazy hail, I don't want it to, um, I don't want it to, to beat up the car outside, so I gotta get it indoors. Are we all settled in the new house? Yes, we sure are. We've been uh, in here for a couple months, I guess now, over, over two months, and I think everything's pretty much sorted and put away. There's still things like I have boxes of some collectibles that I gotta put out and, um, and get sold, but um, more or less we're all settled in here and I've got to do the big shuffle in the garage here to make room for uh, a couple more vehicles which will take some squishing but that's why I'm hoping to get the big limousine out so that uh, when that thing's out of the way and in the shop uh, I can move things around a little easier but uh, yeah lots going on here I'm going to visit my brother we're going to be um, doing some more videos uh, obviously <laughs> and uh, trying to do a car restoration. I've got uh, two car restorations, three, I guess, three car restorations on the go right now. I've got the limousine on the go. I've got the new thing, which I'm not talking about yet because there's gonna be a video coming out soon, the new thing, but it's sitting outside under a tarp uh, or under a car cover, working on that. And then the Volkswagen bus is, uh, it was giving me some transmission trouble, so it's back in the shop. But I do wanna get that thing painted and, and bring it back to life fully. So lots of stuff on the go right now and then I will probably be bringing a bunch of old motorcycles home at some point, so yikes. Um, oh, somebody said, any plans to buy more storage lockers? You know, the funny thing is, um, I actually bought one today because there was one thing in there that I wanted for Abigail. Um, so I ended up buying a storage unit just for that one thing. Um, oh, Dead Brown says, remind us of when the next auction is too. Okay, next auction is uh, middle of August, so in probably two, three weeks. Uh, but back to the, uh, the storage unit thing. Yeah, the one, the one I bought previously, that had a bunch of um, 
bunch of drugs in it and uh, I, I was really uh, nervous about the second unit that I bought today and we wore rubber gloves and it was just normal stuff, which is what you kind of hope for, that you're just gonna get normal stuff. Um, that said, that locker that had the, um, the bags of naughty business in it, <laughs> that, uh, that locker actually had a lot of really good things that were sellable that came out of it and um, things that we were able to use for ourselves. So at the end of the day, it was a good unit. You know, it was 240 bucks for that unit, I think is what I paid for it. And although it was a lot of work and um, several trips to the dump and to the, to the charities to get rid of things, there was so much good stuff that came out of there. Um, like it was worth it just for that Helly Hansen jacket for It was a brand new Helly Hansen jacket in Abigail size. That would be like a $300 coat and um, you know, winter is gonna be coming, fall's coming, so there we go. Oh, Sapphire Blue says, why freak about weed? I'm not freaking about the weed. I could care less about that because it is legal here. In that quantity, I don't think I'd wanna have that quantity. It's the other stuff that was problematic. It was the stuff tied, and tied up blue little uh, rubber gloves that was the problem. And, um, and that's the stuff that you wanna be careful. Plus there was purses full of some kind of pills and things, so anyway. Um, so somebody says, don't bring the limo to the same mechanic as the rolls, you won't get it back from us. Well, yes, they were a little bit slow on it, but um, keep in mind that that rolls was pretty tough shape and they were able to bring it back to life. There's not a lot of people, in my area, there's not a lot of people that can work on a Daimler um, that have access to parts that have worked perhaps on a Daimler before. Uh, it's a really weird British kind of car. So I'm gonna try and do some of the work myself. I'll see if I can sort out what's going on with the gas issue on the car and, um, and hopefully I can get it going. But yeah, I'm debating where to go, but there's just not many people around that have worked on those sorts of things. Uh, parts are scarce for any vehicle now. Yeah, they, they are indeed. Uh, somebody says, will you sing for us again soon? Yeah, probably. I mean, uh, boy, there's a lot of new people that have joined the channel in the last little while that, that haven't been with me for as long as some of you guys have. And uh, they don't know that I do all sorts of videos. That I do, um, you know, everything from hunting for antiques to house renovations to car restorations to motorcycles. Uh, so occasionally sing. Uh, we, did, we do family travel vlogs. Like, I'm kind of a... Uh, the alphabet soup of, um, of YouTube channels. <laughs> uh, you know what happens if you eat too much alphabet soup? You'll have a big bowel movement. <laughs> um, but I, I'm like a, I don't know, I'm, I'm like a big mesh of all sorts of different sorts of things. And um, when I do these videos, like I did a whole run of going to uh, find antiques and doing storage lockers and we picked up a whole bunch of new subscribers. And then I did a, uh, <laughs> I did a video of us going on vacation. Somebody's like, what kind of channel is this? This is supposed to be about looking for antiques and going to storage units and stuff. And I'm like, ah, yeah, well, I kind of do a lot of different things. So I can only imagine if I sing, a lot of the new people who just joined the channel will be like, what's up with this guy? He's just randomly singing now <laughs> on a video. <laughs> uh, but there you go. Yeah, I'll, I mean, I just do things as I, as I feel like it, um, as, as I please. So <laughs> if I am working on a car, I'm gonna talk to you about working on a car. This is one of those things when you're, when you're living your life and sharing what's happening in your world on your YouTube channel, it's not just like, it's not scripted television. You know, um, oh, Kathy says the, the first video she watched was helping out Adam, uh, who was at the time homeless. And yeah, Adam's actually doing really good now. So uh, uh, I'm glad you found us from that, Kathy. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, somebody said, well, are you gonna go out and help some more people at some point too, uh, like we did with Hans or with Adam? I think that there's a, there's a difference um, you know, when it, when, it came to, when it comes to helping people, I feel like it has to be somebody who comes into your life at the right time for the right reasons. And, um, and my heart is always open to helping somebody, but I'm not actively going out and seeking, seeking people right now to try and help. Um, but if somebody was in, in my world that needed something, and I do actually help a lot of folks that I just don't talk about either, you know, that are close to us that uh, we do help out too, but... Um, you know, I think I just, the moral of the story is I, I show you the things that are happening in my life as they're happening. 
And so today I might be working on a car, tomorrow I might be driving through a farm field, the day after in a storage unit, the day after that I might be singing a song, I don't know, you guys are along for this adventure, I don't even know what I'm doing most days <laughs> as my schedule fills up. So I'm just, I'm just taking you guys along for the ride. And I would just say, you know, um, watch the videos that you want to watch and uh, that makes it easy. You know, I think somebody said, oh, I'm going to subscribe because this guy put up a video about going to the mountains. I'm like, well, you didn't have to watch that one. You know, if you're, it says right in it, take my kids on a trip to the mountains. If you don't want to watch that, don't watch it and then get mad that that's what it was about. <laughs> I was pretty upfront. Um, but truthfully, you know, going on a trip to the mountains with the kids was, it was a great adventure. And um, selfishly, sometimes I do these videos so that um, maybe down the road, if my kids want to look back and remember, uh, or my own family wants to look back and remember, they'll have that memory there forever. Plus it gets to show off parts of Canada, um, parts of our world, which I've not shared with you. Um, so yeah, we just like to share it. Well, somebody says, what's the spot on my neck? I got bitten by something and then I scratched it off. So <laughs> I was, I was uh, outdoors and I was like, ah, something bit me. And then I scratch it and I, I, whatever it was, I don't know. I think it might've been a wasp or something. So I have, I have this little wound on my neck. You'll be the only ones that know if you watch videos in the next little bit. <laughs> Yeah, you'll know I got bitten. I got bitten on the back of my leg too. And it was like a, it was the weirdest thing. It was like a bite in the middle and then a bunch of little round bites or dots all around. So I'm thinking maybe spider on that one. I don't know. I gotta be, I, maybe I gotta put some deep woods off on before I go back in our back bush. But I was mowing the lawn and I had all sorts of, I was probably stirring up the hornet's nest and whatever else. And uh, <laughs> I was, I was getting uh, bitten by things. Uh, let's see. Uh, hello from England, love your channel. I know I missed a bunch of questions there and I'm trying to scroll back down and read what some of they were. I've uh, been watching Potter's Us, so nice to watch you grow. I know there's been bumps along the way. Yes, there has been. Oh, people are just saying they like the variety in the channel. There we go. Um, oh, Second Chair says, how do you like driving the 911? My friend has a 1970. You know what? That car, that 911 is probably one of the most fun cars I have to drive <laughs> um, on any given day. And it, it is, listen, I, I remember hearing an interview with Jay Leno once and people were giving Jay Leno a hard time about having all these cars. And he said, well, if you were in my position, he's like, yeah, if you were in my position, wouldn't you have a bunch of cars too? He's like, just, he's just a guy who found his way into being successful and had a bunch of cars. Now I know Jay Leno by any means, but I know that it's, it's a spoiled hobby to have several old cars. And, and I know there's, there's guys in my neighborhood here who have like three times the amount of cars I do. From the kid that I was, not thinking any of this was possible, I will, I'm grateful for what I have. But I will say that out of the cars that I have, they all offer a little something different. The, um, the Volkswagen bus is just like, I'm in a stupid old bus and it barely drives, but I'm having a great time. And I know why people love them because it's just a stupid vehicle and you can stop and put your pop-up tent up and you've got a house. <laughs> it's just so cool. So I love that thing, but I don't love it for its performance or anything like that. It's just a fun little thing to go drive around in and, um, and have fun. But uh, for, for the cars that I have, yeah, that 911 behind me is just, it's just a riot. You know, it's not so fast that it's stupid. It's quick and it sounds nice and it handles well in a classy vintage kind of way. And um, I don't know. I've never been one who's into supercars or things like that. It, to me, it feels maybe a little pretentious to have a Lamborghini or one of those sort of things. Uh, and I read an article once, a guy was saying that a Lamborghini Countach is in fact a terrible vehicle. Um, you, like you can't, you no visibility and you can't drive it right. Anyway, you barely fit inside of it. So um, the nice thing about the 911 is that I am almost six foot two. Like I said, I'm six one a little bit. And the Germans designed those cars so they actually are quite spacious inside. So there's tons of room inside a very little car and um, I quite like it. Uh, Bob says the 64 Caddy would look so cool in the garage. The 64 Caddy would take up a lot of valuable real estate. It was very cool. Um, somebody says, ask Kubi how he likes his Countach. I'm guessing he doesn't. Oh no, he did a video on that, didn't he? About how he hated his Countach. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a nice thing to have. And there are certain cars um, that are just, to me, they're art. Uh, a Countach is, is modern art. It's, it's a vehicle, but it's modern art. 
Uh, but when I look at the cars that I've been trying to collect, and um, like the Nash Metropolitan or the Porsche or the E-Type Jag, um, those are all vehicles to me that have some very interesting styling cues. And the vehicle that I recently bought also has very cool styling cues too. It looks like a spaceship. Um, or what somebody in the 70s thought a spaceship would look like. <laughs> um, so I am uh, I'm eager to get that thing on the road as well. But um, probably the most boring car I have is my Mustang, which is the, the 68 Mustang, which is not really a boring car. It's just everybody has one. Like if you say you got an old car, in my neighborhood alone, I think there's four or five people that have 68 or nine Mustangs. So it's not a very special vehicle, even though mine says it's special right on the back. It says California special. <laughs> um, I like things where people are gonna ask like, what is that? Or weird, or I've never heard of one of those before. Um, or just that it looks beautiful. So if you see cars coming towards my house, the ones I plan on keeping are the ones that I think are kind of like just rolling artwork anyway. It's like my own little art gallery. Um, like the E-Type and the, the Porsche and, and uh, you know, even the Daimler is a beautiful car. Uh, I'm going to flip this around one last time here. <laughs> you know, okay, there's the Mustang. And it is a rare-ish car because it's got the Shelby taillights and stuff on it. But see, it thinks it's special. It says special right on it. Um, this Daimler, I was thinking, would look really cool in a two-tone paint job that's of the time, something of the time, of the era, like a really neat, anyway, I'm thinking about what to do with this car, but I really like the lines on it, like somebody really, it's sculpture is what it is, somebody really had to think about where these lines were flowing and what was going on, um, let's see, oh yeah, there's the E-Type over there, this is the Porsche, 1969 Porsche, I should say Porsche, I know, I know it's meant to be Porsche, but anyway, you know what I mean. 69 Porsche. That is probably my most fun car to drive right now. The E-Type is fine to drive. It's just a different experience. The E-Type is all about being uh, refined with a high top end speed and nice and quiet. And it's just like an elegant car. The Porsche is a little more grippy and throaty and feels like it wants a racetrack. And uh, the Daimler is a top hat. If a top hat had wheels, that's what this car is. So I've got a top hat and uh, a monocle in the Daimler here. So I'm, I'm debating what to do with the body. It's actually, the body's in really good shape on it. If you can't tell, the, it, the paint is a little chipped in places, but it's not a rust bucket at all, mainly because it's primarily aluminum. So it's in really decent condition. Oh, and that's my motorcycle, which I haven't taken out. I have only taken it out once this year. So I should probably get on that and go for a ride. Anyway, future things for me to do. Actually, I am behind um, today. I've not gone to the gym, so maybe I will take the motorcycle to the gym and get it out on the road. Um, assuming this quasi-tornado doesn't hit us, which might, may or may not be headed towards us <laughs> right now. Maybe not the smartest thing to take the bike today. Nah. Anyway. Uh, stay tuned for more videos, guys. I'm going to be uploading one probably tomorrow or the next day, and then hopefully I'll have a, um, an update video on the crazy weird car that I bought and I haven't really told you guys about. Um, so there you go. Oh, uh, Denise says, do you find any more info about the limo being a royal car? Well, I, I fear that um, it may have just been a story. It does have the flag mount on the front, and they did use those for the 46 or 47 uh, procession that the Royals went through Scotland or whatever. They did use those exact cars. <clears throat> there are signs that it was painted Royal Claret, the burgundy color at one point. But when I wrote the Royal Archives, they had no a record of that license plate number. Now that could just be that the license plate that is mounted on that vehicle, uh, because the Royal cars actually are uh, HRH like 001 or HRH 004 or whatever. So if it was um, a royal car, they probably wouldn't have given them the royal plate anyway. Um, so I might not be able to tell from that. But I did get in touch with the guy that was the uh, owner of this vehicle in 1970s or 80s in uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. And he said it was black when he had it. And he had purchased it from the mayor of Bath or it was used by the mayor of Bath in England. So it did have some, you know, upper echelon use at one point. Um, but as for me, uh, I'm always like Jed Clampett driving around in these things. 
Uh, you know, like, how much junk can I fit in that trunk? Oh, wait, that sounds suggestive. <laughs> but how much stuff can I fit? Actually, let me show you what I did with the trunk of the car. I actually put trunks in the trunk of the car. I was uh, vacuuming in here and cleaning, and I had those two leather cases I was saving from when I had my store. But don't those look like they belong back there? I think they do. Anyway, guys, I'm going to call it a night. I'm going to tinker on... Uh, cars for a bit more, go to the gym, exercise, have a protein shake, I guess, and uh, call it a day. So thank you so much for tuning in today. Thanks for going through some toys and stuff with me. And um, as always, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you all soon, and bye for now. Bye, guys.